a content creator is somebody who is a creative person who is putting out works for people to either view or consume in different and multiple ways, whether that be through photography, videography, or some kind of product that the person was hired to make and facet and produce for a company or for their own personal use as being, for example, a family photo. With that being said, a lot of people have begun to have this wrong misconception of what it takes to be a content creator. Let me explain. Nowadays, when it comes to content creation, a lot of people think that you need certain tools and things to be able to be a what's considered a actual content creator. Let's mark that as the standard for what is expected from a viewer or somebody who's going to consume that content or somebody who's going to pay for that content creator to work and produce a product for them then to go forth and use it in personal use or in a business sense for companies or something like that. And what I mean by that is that there are content creators who would be considered content creators because they do wedding photography or videos for weddings or they work with companies to work on advertisements that you see maybe for rental properties or you know car dealerships or something like that it can be local it can be you know statewide nationwide wherever it may be but that is the more business i would say aspect of being a content creator and they're putting their works like i said out there for multiple people to consume and they're usually getting paid for their work the problem is as a new content creator a lot of people look at content creators who do that as their main thing and their hobby is doing TikToks, youtube whatever because they have this expensive gear they're already making you know money off of those contracted i would say obligations to create and produce that content and since they're doing it anyways whether they're just sitting at their desk editing or something like that they have 10 15 20 years five years whatever it may be of experience in whatever field that can range from making movies you know whether it be short films or something like that just on some kind of platform and then maybe they're taking it to a movie festival or film festival or whatever or maybe they're doing some art you know artwork or whatever as far as drawing and stuff like that making emotes for people or just you know painting or something like that they're doing a job already like i said they're getting paid for it the problem is is that they have the tools to show what they do whether you know what i'm saying they're painting but they already have a camera you know what i'm saying because maybe they take a lot of photos and stuff and they need that equipment to facilitate selling you know their content or showing off a portfolio or something like that to a company for potential clients the problem is, is like I said, they have that gear because that's the tool for their job. And because they already have that, they just say, why not make a YouTube channel? Why not, you know, make some other social media platform and use the tool that I'm already using to create and do my job that I'm getting paid for to make even more money as a side hustle or just something that they enjoy and they want to help educate other people because maybe they're really good at EQ and microphones because that's what they do. They're a sound engineer or maybe, you know, they paint or sketch or something like that and they want to document their progress as well as help others and stuff like that like genuine good people there are people out there who are just doing it for more money you know what i'm saying so there's obviously different you know mentalities behind why they're doing it but the thing about it is again as you as a new content creator this is where you come in you see all that stuff being done you see the expensive gear you see the expensive cameras the expensive lenses the microphones the the audio interfaces the pcs the brand deals you see the the, la the lavish lifestyle and everything like that you see what they're able to accomplish but what you don't understand is like i mentioned all the things before they have years of experience whether it be 5 10 15 20 years that's why they are knowledgeable in whatever as aspect that they're creating that video for and you're watching they have that time as far as growing and being i would say educated in what they're doing the tricks and everything the different individual facets and stuff they had to learn in order to produce really good quality i would say content that you're consuming and that you're trying to emulate and do yourself the problem is is that people will completely ignore that stuff and they'll go out and they'll ask 
what gear did you use to make this video? What audio did you use or whatever as far as microphone, software, audio interface, whatever it is to facilitate making your audio sound really good? That's something I'm struggling with as far as audio and stuff and doing these videos. But the thing about it is, is that, like I said, a lot of people will end up trapped into the mentality of, OK, this person, I really like their content. I really like the visuals and how they do stuff. You know what I'm saying? I can learn editing program and whatever they're using, whatever, because there's multiple people that do, you know, videos on the editing program. So I got that down packed. But I'm only going to be able to do what they do if I get the camera, if I get the lens that this person is using. And I'm going to get into talking about cameras specifically because I think this is where majority of potential content creators end up spending more money than necessary for the type of content that they're going to be producing on a certain platform. So take this idea of what we're talking about when it comes to cameras and lenses, and you can apply this into thinking of other gear that you can acquire for your content creation needs. So please, please, please think about it deeply and understand my position and what your position potentially is when it comes to acquiring not only cameras and lenses, but any other types of gear that you're, again, you're gonna use for your content creation. So you'll see in the comment section of videos, what camera did you use? What lens did you use? This thing is fantastic or wherever and all that stuff. And then the person would be like, well, I used a full fan camera that costs like $1,700. And then the lens on top of it, it's anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars when it comes to even cameras themselves and what a person is capable of doing with a camera they don't realize that a lot of people can get away with using the alpha 6100 it's a super old camera the sensor still looks good i use it for photos i use it for thumbnails here on the channel and everything never had a complaint from it never had a complaint about my b-roll sections or anything like that using a cheap lens now i'm using the yang new 16 millimeter lens that's what you're looking at right now on the sony zv e10 mark ii that yang new 16 millimeter lens there's also a 11 millimeter lens both of these lenses are under 300 dollars. but when you look at lens recommendations from a lot of these big I would say bigger content creators and you look at talking head vlogging lens all that stuff they'll tell you along the lines of the sigma 16 millimeter lens the sony 11 millimeter lens all these lenses or wherever and the sigma 16 millimeter lens i saw recently way above 400 dollars. when i purchased it it was like 320 or 40 something like that roughly you could see like the almost like a hundred dollars jump in price just because cameras are coming out and people will still recommend it but the problem is is that when they do reviews on these products and stuff like that like the young new 16 and 11 millimeter lens respectively they recommended them they said they were really good budget lens unless you were doing work like they were doing for businesses and corporates and all that stuff like that but for youtube casual video like this the lens is perfectly fine the problem would become when somebody needs to blow up an image or they need to look and stuff or wherever and obviously like i said do more professional work with something that you're going to get paid for then you see this dispar disparity between you know the cheap budget lens versus you know the more i would say premium brand lens like sigma and sony and the thing about the sony zv e10 mark ii it's going to be on track just like the sony zv e10 mark one and in performance as far as sales and people picking it up and everything like that but people are flaming the sony zv e10 mark ii and saying people should get the alpha 6700 or the fx30 the sony zv e10 mark ii is going to be better than alpha 6700 or the fx30 for multiple reasons people are not going to hold a camera anymore most people are going to sit it down on a tripod or do what i'm doing right now it's on a clamp that's clamped to my desk wherever on a pole to simulate a tripod and most content creators who this camera is geared towards is going to do something like this even outside for vlogging and stuff and more and more you're starting to see people not able to go out and vlog and take their this kind of setup or with the lens and all this stuff into certain places in public and be denied access or saying that you need a permit to be here all that stuff and that's why you're seeing more popular channels still sticking to action cameras or the osmo pocket 
three and two and all that stuff because they're smaller they're more discreet they're similar and 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 thought process of like using your cell phone or something like that so they're more acceptable more often than not like i said people are traveling around they're getting the neck stuff the chest stuff wherever for action cameras and everything and those content creators that are using those items for that type of content creation they're gonna have a more i would say hassle-free time than getting a camera that has ibis in it just because everybody recommended it and now they're trying to film in a place and they get kicked out or they get told put it away because look how invasive and intrusive this looks versus an action camera or the dji osmo pocket 3. now you still probably will run into those times where they'll still tell you to put away the action camera or the you know osmo pocket 3 but more often than not people will be more acceptable to using those devices over something like this in a public space well there'll be some people out there that would be like well i could take advantage of the alpha 6700 or another camera out there that has an ai chip in it because i could take advantage of that as a new content creator and use it for making videos right and that's what i'm saying a lot of people will tell you like oh don't get the mark ii well you as a brand new content creator when you start looking for editing programs and stuff like that you might have learned about a program called CapCut. and if you don't know what CapCut is it is a program that you can use to edit your footage whether it be on your cell phone or desktop and at least on the cell phone version it has the access to that ai program that can track your hands your face your body and you pay like eight dollars a month or whatever for it and a lot of people use it for their vertical format content but you can also use it for you know your regular format your you know horizontal content like the video you're watching right now you can have access to something that's going to do that just like i would say the alpha 6700 and instead of paying 1300 for that ai tracking chip wherever it built into the camera you can pay eight dollars a month you, you see what i'm saying and on top of that well what else does the alpha 67 have over the sony zv e10 mark ii only thing else that it has is that built-in time lapse wait a minute the built-in time lapse is in the sony zv e10 mark ii and it is only at a thousand dollars body alone versus the alpha 6700 which is coming in around 1300 and something body alone so what else do would you need the alpha 6700 for the ibis like we talked about earlier nine times out of ten people who are beginner content creators and stuff like that they're not going to care about their shaky cam footage or whatever they're going to find ways around that just like i said put it on a selfie stick put it on a coffee table put it on a park bench put it on a tripod or whatever talk to the camera sparingly use it while hand holding and stuff like that because they're not going to just sit there and hold it all day like this or wherever because eventually your arm and hand's going to get tired your wrist is going to get tired you're not going to want to do that even with a camera that has ibis or optical stabilization you're, you're just not so realistically why would anybody need to pick up the Alpha 6700 over a less expensive item like the Sony ZV E10 Mark II? The only other reason is the viewfinder. But wait a minute, you're a beginner content creator. You're not doing photocentric work. You're doing video first work. So the viewfinder is going to be rendered effectively useless to you. Albeit you might take some photos or wherever, of course, occasionally, but does that really justify the uptick in cost to the Alpha 6700 over what would be essentially the better choice for you as a content creator, especially since we're already talking about expensive gear? Think about that for a second. Let that sink in. In all actuality, most people who are going to get the Alpha 6700 because people are going to recommend it because it has IBIS, it has the AI tracking, it has the built-in time lapse, they're going to do exactly what I'm doing right now. They're going to put it in a tripod in their homes and it's like you could have saved or you could go in with the sony zv e10 mark one which is still a fantastic camera and i've seen it used on keh for 519 dollars that's absolutely crazy to me and that's body alone and then like i said you can get the yong new 16 or 11 millimeter lens that's going to be perfect enough for talking head videos and 11 millimeter obviously more so if you're going out and vlogging and if the 11 millimeter is too wide for your office you can always close the distance and crop in your footage or wherever in editing 
people won't tell you this stuff. There are certain feature sets that are an improvement over the Mark 1 to the Mark 2 and that allow content creators to have a more seamless and more efficient workflow like the built-in time lapse, like the Cindy vlog and stuff like that. So people don't have to do that in editing. It doesn't matter if you can do that in editing because again, at the end of the day, this equipment, this expensive gear that everybody's recommending and everybody's thinking that they have to get in order to you know emulate and be like these successful content creators they're just tools to allow you to efficiently do whatever content you're trying to produce whether it is through clients and contracts and stuff like that or the hobby of being a content creator here on youtube or whatever platform you're making your content for and that's the difference and people don't people don't know how to separate the difference get the right tool for the right job get tools that are going to allow you to be more efficient at creating the type of content that you're trying to create and i'll be the first to tell you as a content creator who's purchased a lot of gear and has received gear to do product reviews everything that's man-made is not perfect they all have flaws they all have cons and pros and everything like that that comes with each individual type of product that you can use as tools to create the type of content that you want to create and sometimes like i said before the less expensive item is going to make more sense as a content creator who is a beginner or intermediate than the more expensive item and like i said with the example of the cameras the sony zv e10 mark ii is going to be better for 85 to 90 percent of content creators out there who are going to be beginners and intermediate versus the alpha 6700 but the problem is is that most people who would be suited to spend less money on an item they're going to still spend on that alpha 6700 because content creators who are already established and big out there as well as comment sections and people who have no idea what they're talking about but they're just regurgitating what somebody else said pretty much the hearsay friend of a friend type of deal they're going to go and purchase that because they seen that and that's just going to be a gross misuse of funds because those funds that were allocated to purchasing that more expensive type of gear could have been disseminated between multiple pieces of gear or tools to be able to facilitate the type of content that they're going to be making because again these items are just tools to make whatever idea or creative outlet that you're trying to do a reality that's all it is so again, you don't need the top of the line, latest and greatest in tech to make that stuff a reality. The most important thing that a beginner and intermediate content creator that needs to learn is the fact of the content that you're making for your audience to consume is more important than the gear that you're using. What value information are you giving them through your video or photo or explanation podcast, whatever it is? what are you giving them what kind of creative idea or enjoyment or educational or whatever it is are you bringing to the platform for your audience or potential new audience to consume what creative ideas are you coming up in your brain that those tools are going to be that pin that's going to allow you to put your idea and creation to paper and make it become reality that's the most important asset to your toolkit than any kind of camera lens whatever it may be because yes your gear is still going to be important because like i said it's going to allow you to make the content but it's not the be all end all it's a means to an end it's a means to help you produce the content because again the tools and the gear doesn't make the content creator the content that you're producing makes the content creator I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you found this video helpful or informative, don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and you want to see some more content from me in the future, then consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.